welcome or welcome back to the channel. I know that a few videos ago I said I was going to start focusing more on photography and travel and then I posted a bunch of videos about chickens. Um, I probably will still probably post more chicken content because I'm a crazy chicken lady. Um, but I am gonna try to continue to make more photography videos and stuff. So I also in that video said that I was going to make a video about tips on taking better self portraits. And that was not a lie. So here I am today, I'm going to walk you through just some of my tips on taking better self portraits or selfies. Um, I have 11 tips I'm going to go through and yeah, if they help you out or anything, go ahead and like this video. If you have any of your own tips, leave them in the comments and I'll go ahead and get started. Oh, and also don't forget to subscribe. So thanks. Okay. So tip number one is to build confidence. Um, this I feel like is a pretty good tip. When you first start taking photos of yourself, you're going to be kind of camera shy. I mean, it's to be expected. You're going to have to get used to putting that like emotion and, you know, being vulnerable, I guess, in front of the camera. So it takes a while to kind of get to that point. The best thing to do is just to continue to take photos. Um, like anything, practice makes perfect, so just keep snapping. Um, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it for that. So just build up your confidence level in front of the camera. Um, so tip number two is to be comfortable. And this kind of goes hand in hand with being confident is to just be comfortable. I feel like it's basically the same thing, but I'm talking more like clothing, where you are, that kind of thing. So, I mean, wear clothes that you're comfortable in. Um, for instance, you might see a lot of self-portrait uh, photographers maybe in really fancy dresses or whatever. If you're not comfortable in something like that, or if you just don't have something like that, I mean, a shirt and jeans, t-shirt and jeans, that's fine. And that's what I wear in a lot of my photos or I just have a couple couple really simple dresses that I sometimes wear. Um, but I mean, just however you dress, I mean, it kind of depends on what you're kind of going for in your photos, but however you kind of dress in real life is fine in front of the camera, especially when you're trying to do like kind of like a candid kind of a shot. We'll get more to that later. Um, so yeah, and also like where you are. I mean, I take most of my photo, Pretty much all my photos just at my house. I do live out in the country, so I have not a lot of like nature areas to go photograph in. You might not necessarily have that where you are, but anything like a local park or anything like that, you could go to. And of course, you don't have to take photos in nature. You can do things that are in your house, or like if you have like a really cool down downtown main street area maybe in your town you could do that but of course that involves taking photos out in public which you might not be as open to i very rarely take photos of myself out in public um again that kind of goes with like building confidence and being comfortable and stuff and you'll just kind of get there when you get there um yeah so let's see, we're going to go ahead and start talking more about like equipment to use. Um, this video isn't really going to go into detail about like what kind of camera or lens or the settings or anything, but there are other pieces of equipment that you should probably invest in if you plan on pursuing photography in general or especially self portrait photography. So the first thing is to use a tripod. Um, I mean, a tripod is really important when you're taking photos of yourself because otherwise, unless you're using like your phone or something and you're just holding the camera and taking the photo, I mean, those photos are good for whatever, but if you're going into more like a fine art self-portraiture kind of realm, you might 
not want that look. So tripods are great. Um, I'll probably, maybe I'll put a photo up here of like the tripod I use. Um, I think my tripod was around $80, I want to say. You can get them pretty cheap or you can get more a more expensive one that's a little more complex or whatever, but you don't really need anything. As long as it holds your camera steady, you're pretty much good. Um, so the next thing that you will need to buy is a remote. A wireless remote allows you to obviously like take the photo do the shutter without having to actually like press the shutter on the camera. Um, I used to use this Nikon one, but then I lost it. <laughs> um, and it was an okay um, remote. I used it for a few years. The only downside was that it only worked from about six feet away. So if you were any further back than that, especially if you're taking, um, photos with like a prime lens like I do and you can't zoom out you can't have like a wide shot and if, but if you do want a wide shot you have to put your camera back further and then the remote doesn't work so I have then gotten this remote um this one is supposed to work from like 100 feet away I haven't tried it from that far away but I've used it from quite a distance and it has worked um this one is Velo brand I'll hold that up hopefully you can see it um, I got this on Amazon and I think it was fairly cheap, um, which is good because it actually is broken. Like it came not working and I just was like, oh, well, I don't have to deal with returning it or anything. I don't really shop on Amazon anymore. So it's whatever. It's okay. But then on your actual camera, you have to like put this thing on top. This is like the transmitter or this is, I don't know, but it has to like transmit to this. And then it'll take the photo, which is just annoying and bulky, you know. Um, the other one, it was just the just the remote. And it worked. It was Nikon brand, so it worked with the Nikon camera. And, of course, they have remotes for all brands of cameras out there nowadays. Um, I would suggest looking into ones that are actually the brand of your camera first. Um, and if not, you can go with something else. I think this one probably had a Canon um, edition as well. Um, so yeah, like I said, this one doesn't work, but it's supposed to take it on the single where it's just, you press it and just take the single photo, a two second delay or continuous. I wanted it for the two second delay, but it only does the single photo, um, which is okay. But unless you have your hands in the photo, in which case you're going to have the remote in your hand. Sometimes you can kind of hide it in your clothes or in your fist. But especially since this remote is bigger, the other remote I used was smaller. Plus it had the two second delay went with the camera. So I could just press it and then like drop it out of the frame if I needed to, which I'm pretty sure is probably how I lost it. Um, I did spend one time like 45 minutes, like looking through tall grass, trying to find it because I had dropped it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you'll need a remote. If you don't use a remote or, you know, don't have the money to spend on one, then you can use the self timer on your camera. But the problem with that is that you won't be able to focus very well, or it's going to be more difficult to focus with the remotes. It focuses for you when you press it. So it'll focus wherever the remote is. If you use the self timer, you have to pre focus, which is a problem if you don't have anything to focus on. So you could always focus on like the spot where you're going to stand or like the chair you're going to be sitting in or something like that. Or you can possibly use another person to stand there or some other object to stand where you're going to be focus on that and then move that press the self timer and then run to the spot. And yeah, so like I said, it's easier with a remote and most remotes are pretty cheap. I think the Nikon one was like $20. This one was about the same. Okay, so now we're gonna move on from equipment and we're gonna start talking about more of the aesthetic kind of elements. Um, so first of all is composition. So you're definitely gonna wanna have to pay attention to your composition. I'm not gonna go into depth about composition, like the basics, like the rule of thirds and stuff like that. Um, but I am going to talk about just a few points that you should keep in mind when you are composing your shot. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the horizon line <clears throat> and basically any kind of 
object in the background that might cause a line like if there's a light post or anything like that that is causing like a relatively straight line in your background along with the horizon line you don't want that to be intersecting through your head or anywhere along the line um, just because that's distracting it looks weird to just have a line going through your head um, of course if you're using a really shallow depth of field um, that might not necessarily be an issue because it might just bokeh out enough um, but if not, you're definitely going to want to keep that in mind. Just place your head well above or even below the horizon line, depending on the kind of angle you're going with. Um, and any other distracting elements, just make sure they're not like popping out of your head or whatever. Um, and then kind of along the same lines is cutting things off inappropriately. So when you're composing the shot, you don't want the, you don't want to, cut anything off like body part wise like at the joints just because that looks a little bit strange on camera and you also don't want to cut anything off like just a little bit so for instance like the tip of your fingers or just like part of one foot um or something like that if you're taking a more close-up shot of your face um you don't want to cut just like the very top of your head off and you also don't want it to be too low um you don't want just the tip of your ear cut off or anything like that um either do more or just don't have it cut off at all um so yeah that's pretty much all i'm going to talk about i think with composition um but yeah just keep in mind some of those elements um and then tip number six is going to be trying to create a fake candid look in your photos so i mean when you're taking self portraits obviously they're all going to be posed um i'm gonna clean my glasses real quick i probably should have done that before i started recording um yeah so they're going to be posed but you can easily create like a look where it looks candid by simply not looking at the camera but of course it's more than just not looking at the camera just kind of take it within your own life like a movie still kind of um honestly I don't really take a whole lot of photos that are based on like can uh candid feel um my photos are usually pretty posed but sometimes i do have more of a candid kind of look um around this tip now i'm going to start showing examples from this tip on pretty much so here are some examples of my more candid kind of looking photos right okay so tip number seven is using props um props help to kind of heighten your photos a little bit there's so many different things you can use in your photos along with yourself um just because it's a self-portrait doesn't mean you have to be the only element within it um here are just some examples of what i have written down for prop examples flowers um sparklers glitter i like to just put some glitter on my face i use just regular glitter not body glitter which would probably be better but whatever um if you just put water on your face and then put glitter on it'll just stick there um smoke bombs fairy lights or christmas lights um books fake blood um i do have a lot of photos that involve fake blood i don't know if i would really be considered a prop um but pretty much anything like that you could include your pets if you wanted to do that anything that's personal to you so like possibly if you're a photographer maybe a vintage camera or something like that um any i mean pretty much anything can be used as a prop have fun with it um here are some examples of photos i've taken that involve some kind of props So tip number eight is to make use of your hands. I feel like this is a more important tip 
Um, so yeah, your hands are going to be a good element to include in your self portraits because they help to heighten the emotion, I think. Um, they add, you know, they just add something more to the photo to look at. So just kind of think of different ways to incorporate your hands into your shot. This is easier if you're taking more of a close up kind of like this. Um, you could always, if you have longer hair, you could always tuck it back or have a hand in your hair, kind of anything along those lines. If you are doing a more, a wider shot, you could have it um, holding the hem of your dress or something along those lines, or you could just simply just be pointing or, you know, just include your hands. Like, I don't really know how to explain it, but here are some examples of my own photos. <music> Number nine is to create a sense of movement within your image. This just helps it to look more, maybe a little more cinematic, just kind of adds a little bit more interest. So for instance, you could do a hair flip or if this, I mean, it helps if the wind's blowing too. Uh, if not, you can always flip your hair and use like a faster shutter speed. Um, if you're wearing a dress or more flowy kind of clothing, you can maybe toss that a little bit and create some motion there. You could always put your foot out like you're maybe taking a step or actually walk as you take photos. Um, you could always, you could jump, twirl. You could always put use your hands as well. Uh, put those hands out and anything along those lines. Um, here are some of my examples. Tip number 10 is to incorporate the environment. So this is a good idea if you are more of like a travel photographer or if you're on vacation or something and you're in a really beautiful location, um, use a wider angle or if you, or just put, you know, put your camera back further and incorporate yourself into the image that like human element within the wider landscape. And this, this can be like back and forth between like, yeah, it's self portraiture, but it's also landscape photography and they just kind of combine. There's a lot of photographers out there who use this in their own images. If you don't follow Elizabeth Gad, are you li living under a rock? <laughs> She's one of my favorite photographers and she has that human element in her landscape photos and their self portraits and they are gorgeous. So definitely go ahead and check her out for some examples. This just makes it look, you get that image of the environment, the mountains, the ocean, whatever it is. And then you there, it adds an extra element. It puts in, puts the scene into perspective. Um, so yeah, here are some of my photos. All right, tip number 11, this is the last one, and it is to try out different angles and poses. You don't want your photos to get stale or you don't wanna become bored taking photos because they all look the same. So try out all sorts of different angles and poses. I'm gonna, not gonna go into depth. I'm probably just gonna show a bunch of examples, but you know, take them from behind, from all sides, maybe have your camera lower, higher, just try all sorts of different photos and you will probably find something that you like. Um, and then just always try different things out. Um, and here are some of my photos. I'm gonna go ahead and end that, end on those. And yeah, like I said, like this video, subscribe and add more of your own tips to the comments. So thank you and see you next time.